is there anyone specific that you want to confront at the reunion? Oh, yes. I mean, I don't think that that's a secret at all. Everyone knows that I'm coming for that flying cockroach. Um, and that's just that on that. Welcome, everybody, to this exclusive interview presented by Formation Productions and Mo Visuals. I'm your host, Mahara Ahmed, and I'm here with the one and only Chanel So from season two of Jocelyn's Cabaret. Yes. Hi, you guys. What's up, money, honey gang? <laughs> I'm doing really good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. And I just wanted to say that Jenny from Formation, she's the owner. Uh, she just wanted to apologize for not being here, but she said that she really supports you and she appreciates your support as well. So she loves you. And we both want to thank you for being here today. Oh, that's okay. Tell her we can rank check on everything. Exactly. <laughs> we don't have to do this again at the end of the season. Exactly. Okay. Because it's going to get hot. Yeah, because this is episode one and child, y'all, y'all brought it. This is all too much heat for one hour episode. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a tease if you ask me. Like when I watched it, you know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, they're going to really get into it. But then it was like, no, because, you know, you can't really know what you're getting yourself into unless you take it back. So I understand the beginning where she's re, um, reintroducing the season one and how that went. You know, it really just rolled into it. But there's so much more to see and so much more that happened that day that it was just like, that was a tease. What happened to the rest of the shit? Ooh, see, now you're teasing us before we even get into the interview. <laughs> <laughs> but before we do that, I want to introduce you a little bit more. We want to know a little bit more about you. So uh, we want to talk about your background and who you are outside of the show. Let us know uh, a little bit more about who you are, um, your childhood, your backgrounds, and all of that. Okay. Well, um, let's see. First of all, my name is Anaya Wilson, and um, I'm 25 years old. My birthday is July 28th. And since I just told everybody, I expect the gift. Um, I'm 25 years old, and I just love to have fun. I'm from Compton, California. You know what I mean? Um, life wasn't always easy for me. I'm definitely loving this new change of experience and environment because I, I'm not used to any of this type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? When all of these normally when you in the hood and all these people is looking for you, it's not a good thing. Okay. It's not a good thing. So this is a good thing. And I'm just like lit about that. And um, meeting Jocelyn Hernandez, I've been watching her since Love and Hip Hop 2012, back when I was a kid, because you know what I'm saying? I could really relate to her. Like she was from the hood. I'm from the hood. Um, you know what I'm saying? We both fell into the entertainment industry, the adult entertainment industry. My father, actually, he was my first, first introduction to the entertainment industry because he was a stripper himself, a male exotic dancer. Yes, the fanatic. Ask about him, know about him. He was the shiz naive, okay? <laughs> With, yes, yes, he was the shiz naive, okay? That's exactly where I get it from. Yeah. It definitely runs it through my veins to be okay. an entertainer, to be a performer. Um, and he told me, he was like, well, if you're going to get out of here, you better not hurt him. You better kill him. I was like, <laughs> yeah, so you your dad me. was completely supportive of this. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. My dad was actually happy that someone else was following his footsteps and making it look like a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I don't have a whole bunch of kids. I don't have any children. You know what I mean? Um, I don't have any of those not, not really no baggage holding me you, back like I'm 25 want? years old and I can just go you know what I mean what exactly and if I want to shake my ass for a bag and make you money. Know what I'm that, let's do it exactly. let's absolutely do it like I've been living in Texas for about four years now and um I've been through a lot I went through Harvey here which was a shock you know what I mean because I can't even fucking swim yeah Next thing you know the whole city is underwater that so I'm like fair, fuck man. Yeah, it was absolutely awful. And then coincidentally, during filming, they had a snowstorm here in Texas, and I missed it because I was in Atlanta filming. So I was like, "Man, thank you God for that." Flashbacks so all the time. PTSD. All the time. Yeah. All the time. You never know because even just for the snowstorm, my mom's roof caved in. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And that is just what am I supposed to do? You know what I mean? Was I can't that during while you were filming? That was the same snowstorm. Yes. And you couldn't do it because you were filming. Yeah. So I was filming with all of that, like, on my head as well. You know what I mean? So mixing personal and business, 
uh, it was crazy. All right, that's awesome. So what actually made you want to be a part of Jocelyn's Cabaret? Like before you even applied for it, did you have a thought? Did you watch season one and be like, you know what, that is the show for me? Yeah, absolutely. I actually did watch season one. I fell in love with season one. Like literally, if y'all could go back and probably look at Jocelyn's comments, you'll see my comments. I'm like, please let me on your show. I want to be on your show. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure because I left it on every post that she made about season one. And coincidentally, I fell in love with um, uh, like the concept of it. I really like the fact like we're going to be putting together an actual routine performance where we don't have to take off our clothes and we can still make these bags, still get, you know what I'm saying, get out there, be famous, the lights, the camera, the action. Like, I wanted all of that. I definitely did. So I, when I watched season one and I found that there was auditions and I found out in the nick of time, I found out about the auditions two days before we had to turn them in. So I hustled and busted my ass to create an audition video that worked and got me noticed and now i'm here so it was for me i feel like that was actually my next question because i was going to ask about the casting process because i feel like i as well as i'm pretty sure a lot of the other fans of reality tv love hearing mm -hmm. about the casting process of tv shows and what goes on behind the scenes so my next question was going to be how did you what was the casting process like so you said that you saw the audition and you auditioned for it so was it really that quick because i know sometimes Casting for shows are like, it's like months and months, but also Zeus is a completely different network. I know they're going up. So let us know what the whole process was like. We want to know everything. See, this is the thing. It's quick as hell for the people who are trying to audition. For us, it's like, okay, so the deadline is this day at this time. And if you don't have it, oh, well, bitch, mm -hmm. next time. You know what I'm saying? But boy, did I have to wait. I waited months and months and months and months. But I mean, it was thousands and thousands and thousands of girls. Okay. So I understand. And I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I was the underdog the whole show. I'm not, I'm not one of those girls who has 400K followers or 150 whatever followers. So for her to see me, she really had to go through some, some auditions. You know what I'm saying? It took a while. I didn't find out that I was like on the show to... I was almost about to leave for the show. I think I found out in the end of January and then we filmed February. So Did they it was like touch with you right or there. Was it like, it was just like they, you auditioned and then they contacted you and then you just waited and you just heard one day that you got it or were they like, Oh, we, we still have you in mind. Like we still want you to part of this. It was very sporadic. It was very sporadic. And then and then it was like a point in time where I guess like Jocelyn had unfollowed me on Instagram. And so some some blog, like, yeah, messy ass blogs ran in my DM and was like, Jocelyn unfollowed you. So do you think you're not going to be on the show? I was like, well, damn, I don't know what I did. They wanted you to start beefing with her. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know what's going on. But I mean, I hope so. Fuck, what did I do? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you feed into it? Did you message her or anything? No, I didn't feed into it. See, that's that's one thing about me. I understand that this is work. You know what I'm saying? So I don't take any of it, of it personal. You know what I mean? Nothing at all. I know the relationship that I have with Jocelyn and the conversation that, was, that we, me and her have. She walked in on me having a conversation, a very heated conversation with my mother while we were on um, set, while we were filming. And, you know, she consoled me. I know what me and Jocelyn have. So I didn't take any of that stuff personal. I thought it was funny. I'm like, you guys, really? What the hell am I going to do if she unfollowed me? What do you want me to do? Tell her something? I'm not going to tell her. And she's going to cuss me out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All you're going to do is start some shit that's unnecessary and make it worse. Make this right. worse. She's definitely not going <laughs> to follow you back after that. <laughs> exactly. I was like, what do you want me to do? I was like, Thanks for telling me. Right. <laughs> so, okay. There is a lot to unpack. I mean, we're seriously only on, we're not even on episode two yet. And there was more drama than there usually is in an entire season of a show. And I'm not complaining. Absolutely. I don't think anybody's complaining because it is some, it, it's a good ass watch. But I will say that you are one it's of the, the people for me. with a little bit more, you know, conservative and laid back and quiet. But then again, we don't know yet what's going to happen in the future while the episodes go on. Yes, there's so much more to see. And like I said, that that was like a part of day one. Y'all have not finished 
our first day. Like, you know what I mean? It was such a teaser. There's so much more to see, so many more things you can't believe. Um, yes, I am very laid back and quiet. I choose to be petty over violent any day because I just feel like I'm too pretty to be doing all that riffraff. You know what I mean? I don't have time for that. Plus, it doesn't pay me anything. If anything, it keeps me out of work because I'll be laid up or my nails are broken and that's ugly. You know what I'm saying? That takes me away from the bag. I don't want to do that. So I chose to handle myself accordingly and, and be really myself. Like, that's really me. I don't do all of that unless someone physically puts their hands on me. Keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to remember that, guys. You heard You heard it first. She said it. But I mean, it's very obvious because I mean, it seems like you just from the first episode um, were a lot more laid back when other people were almost trying to put on a show for the cameras because it was their first time. And I appreciate yeah. the fact that you were just more chill and you didn't even care that the cameras were there. I mean, we'll get to it, but there's an instance where you did get into an argument and you just said like one thing. That was it. So you didn't you didn't do all this <laughs> rah, rah, rah. And I like that. No. Yes. One hitter. Twitter, one take Chanel. That's you know what I'm saying. It's just it, it don't because it doesn't have to go that far. Like that that could be like you said the most memorable thing. It's just like oh well that's it. Oh well shit that's right. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. So at the beginning of the episode, we see you guys just in the van, like you and all the girls. I don't know how you guys initiated getting into that van. Did you guys meet before that? And what were your first impressions on any of the girls? Did any specific girls stand out? And if so, why? Um, yes, we were together before the van. Everything on TV is not like really what it seems. We were in that van for a long ass time. And I drink <laughs> and I don't give a damn. Everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. And so I had to pee. I also have a very weak bladder, which is unfortunate because I love to, I love to drink. Yeah. So um, I made an impression on the girls because my ghetto ass, I hopped out and I went to go pee behind the little lion that was over there. Because, I mean, I had to pee. What was I going to do? Oh, pee on myself? That right. would have been super embarrassing. So it was me, Boss Tech, and Barbie. And the girls were calling us the pissy hoes. <laughs> and I really didn't care because, I mean, well, you wasn't you wasn't going to say I peed on myself. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm. Y'all know I'm drunk. Y'all know. Y'all see me with a drink. Y'all right. know. And, and I need another. So... They just tried to start some shit earlier on. <laughs> Early. And I don't even care because I was like, you damn right I have to be. I'm hop. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Who were the specific people that called you pissy hoes? Um, really, the whole band called us pissy hoes. Um, other than the three of you, obviously, because. Yeah, other than the three of us, because we had, we were the ones that had to pee. Yeah. Everybody was upset. Okay. Everybody was even the producer. He was upset. He was like, "If you cannot hold your pee, we will hold your liquor." I was like, "No, <laughs> no, don't do that." Okay, I'll hold it. I'll hold it. I was like, "Let's not get crazy, okay?" Right. Don't do all that. That's unnecessary. <laughs> right. All right. So y'all pull up to the house, and what did you think of the house? Oh my goodness, I thought the house was immaculate. I have. I was like, "Look here." This is beautiful. But then I also, you know what I'm saying? When I got inside the house and I started noticing all of the pictures and the eyes, and you know, when people be like the eyes be moving, I don't know if I was drunk. I know I was drunk, but I don't know if that had something to do with the eyes moving, but that was the only creepy thing about the house really. And the fact that there was one of the girls, she said that her dead grandma's soul was living in the house with us. What? And so that scared me a little bit, but I was all right. <laughs> right 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 that's something that you should not be laughing at like a comment we'll talk about that was very scary <laughs> <laughs> it's that type of comment that you just should not be laughing at but you can't help it Why no, sir, and then you look around like um so like here or yeah. where it's like okay i'm I, I need to sleep with everybody tonight <laughs> right i was like okay i don't know if you guys are freaked out but i'm pretty freaked out but all of us except for the girl who said you know, we came to a consensus that we were all freaked out. So I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> okay, we all feel the same way. <laughs> so when you pull up to the house, you see Jocelyn, you meet her. You said how you felt about meeting her, how it was kind of like surreal. How did you feel about the fact that you had to live in a house with all these girls that you have never met before? Not only that, but it's a competition on top of that. And a competition not only for a spot in Jocelyn's Cabaret, but for $10,000. So there's money involved and there's a spot 
on a huge show with Jocelyn Hernandez. So there's so much at stake. And did you know that some drama was going to happen? Like, were you ready for it? I mean, okay. Number one, I live alone. So entering into a house, knowing I'm going to have to not only live with a whole bunch of people, but it is 10 bitches. Oh my God. I was just like, you know what? Um, uh, I'm going to have to pray and drink a lot of tequila because this is a lot. I live by myself, you know what I'm saying? So I don't have all that noise and, and everything. And when I'm ready to go to sleep, I can go to sleep, you know? So that was just like crazy. Um, did I expect it to be drama right off the bat? Absolutely. It's a house full of bitches. I just knew that there was going to be something something anything i mean it could have been like bitch um that's my nail polish i don't fucking know like you know what i'm saying it would have been anything anything for something to pop off and that's exactly what happened and it was over something so just crazy which i felt like i really didn't even need to be a part of i was kind of just standing right there but then i got attacked so i was like fuck i have to say something you know what i mean uh it was a mess absolute mess but i loved it how um how did you cope with being around all these cameras directing towards you? I mean, we see shots where we see the people behind the scenes and there's like 15 people right next to you guys. How do you not just stare into a camera? Do you really get used to that? Because that's what a lot of people on TV say. Um, Yeah, you kind of get used to it. And then it's the fact that there's so much other stuff going on. You really can't look at the camera or you might get punched in the face. Yeah. Like <laughs> you have to <laughs> you have to keep your eyes on the prize okay you have to <laughs> you, you can okay because they will come from anywhere honey you gotta yeah. be on a swivel seriously you gotta, you gotta be safe you gotta make sure that you ain't getting snuck this period because you saw that's how it starts that's how it all starts one person sneak one person the other person want to sneak her back or try to or whatever the fact case may be i don't know i you know hell all right so what made you think that you have what it takes to to win this show like, were you super confident about it once you saw all the girls? It's like, I knew when I saw the other auditions, I was like, okay, off top, I'm seeing things that I did that were probably a little bit more professional or cooler for someone who's technically a newbie or a rookie. Like, I had a green screen and backdrops and slides switching back and forth where most girls, they just did their interview kind of just like this, you know? or whatever, um, my dancing. And, and it sucked because the clip that I wanted to be in my audition tape didn't make it in my audition tape. It was my pole dancing. Um, it didn't make it in there. But even still with the, the slide that did make it in there, I felt like it was killing, it was giving. You know what I'm saying? I felt very confident, absolutely. And I knew that she saw me out of all of these girls. Promote the one that you like on your social media. Oh, I did. It was a hit. Good. Yes, I promote it all the time. It's a hit. And people be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that one didn't make it. I was like, but you see it anyway. And now you know what the fuck really going on. Like, I really does this. It was like two seconds before y'all got into the house from what we see that Jocelyn's talking to you guys and Aqua gets emotional. She's talking about how she had to get an abortion with her twins. And Big Lex makes a comment. Yeah, double homicide. Bitch. I'm, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What were your thoughts during that moment? I mean, the camera doesn't show it, but my mouth literally dropped. I was like, Mine too. Mine too. I was like, What the? F I can't believe. I mean, because I'm just going to put it out there. Aqua, when I first got off the plane in Atlanta, I met Aqua first. And then I met Barbie second. We rolled together, we met each other right off the plane. Aqua was immediately telling me her situation. And I was like, girl, you do not know me from, from a hole in the wall. Like if I was one of these eviler girls, they would have ran with that and oh, probably like, yes, ate you up and spit you. Yes, and spit you out right then and there. Right. And you probably wouldn't even want to continue even going into the house. But I'm not that type of way. So I'm just like, hey, I understand what you're going through. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, in my head, you're really hurt. But you shouldn't say that. You shouldn't say that. You should not You should not tell nobody else that no more. She did not listen. So when Big Legs made the comment, 
I was like, damn, that was fucked up. It was very disgusting. But she kind of brought it on herself by saying it again. Bitch, you don't listen. I told your ass. Don't say that shit no more. And you said it. So, I mean, fuck, what I'm supposed to do now? I, I did what I could for her. Well, hopefully moving forward, she knows a little bit better and knows to like keep her guard up a little bit, but it kind of sucks because I'm sure being in that house, it makes everything more emotional. You're away from your family, you're away from your friends. So all of this just weighs on you. And then there are cameras around you. So having somebody to open up to, hopefully by you speaking to her, she understood that maybe you are one of those people that won't judge her or won't talk shit to her about her situation. So- I'm hoping that at that point she realized like at least there's one person that won't be like a bitch to me you know because exactly about things that are have that nothing sucks. to do like who wants to talk about that sucks that's horrible you know what i'm saying like I, all i could be like was um you want to get a drink like you could drink now so you want to drink like i didn't even know what to say because i don't have kids and i've never been through that type of situation before so i was just like fuck um i hope she's okay you know yeah, it's one of those moments where you just don't know what to say. Like, there's nothing. Yeah. To say. <laughs> and then it went into the suicide thing, and she was talking about that with Jocelyn. And I was just like, damn, like, girl, this is escalating. Part? Did you hear huh? any of that part of her telling Jocelyn? I mean, I just heard it when they were down there. They were already filming. Mm. And I really couldn't believe it. I was just like, that is pretty shitty to come on the TV to try and, you know, win an opportunity and then want to die off of some something that somebody said. Like, I mean, she did, I don't know. It's, it's really a catch-22 on that situation. I feel for the girl. Um, I hope that she gets the help that she needs. So, like, literally right after that, it goes into you guys getting your rooms or you guys were supposed to get your rooms. And this argument started behind the scenes before the cameras could even capture it. Were you there to hear the beginning of it and why it started? So um, we were, you know, everyone was kind of hanging around in the hallways looking for uh, really snacks. We was looking for snacks, yeah. at least I was. Y'all was drunk. Because uh, we were hungry. Yeah. Like, you know, we had did the filming a bunch of times and I was hungry. So uh, when people get to hanging around, that's kind of where the jibber jabber starts coming in and I walked uh, with Barbie and Boss Tech and then Aqua was standing by like the little stairs. And I guess Barbie was like, you know, I feel for you. You know, we were just trying to console her. But I'm thinking that because of how we were linked up, Big Lex assumed that we were talking about her. I mean, Aqua still was talking about her, but I mean, she had all every right. You know what I'm saying? Aqua was still going in. She was highly upset, which she had every right to be. But me, Barbie and Boss Tech, we weren't saying anything about Big Lex at that time but since she assumed that you know she just attacked us and uh yeah big legs just went in on on everybody and she was like you know all four of y'all that's why i was like i'm not mad at all and then i mean what were we supposed to do be like oh we're not talking about you know back down that's gonna look crazy no we had to say something too because we wasn't even talking about you or anything like that we were trying to console the girl she's talking about you but she has a reason to you know what I mean? I think it was just like a misunderstanding. Me and Big Lex, I don't think we have any beef like that. I fuck with her. She a get money, bitch. I get money. It's you know. So y'all are cool now, but at that point, like, did you have a thought in your mind like I'm I'm worried about this girl because she seems like at this point? Oh <laughs> yes, definitely. I always felt like Big Lex was a big person, like a bigger personality than me, to where I was just like, okay, maybe I'm too chill because I don't be, you know all hyped up and stuff like that but I didn't think that we were gonna bump heads the way that we did but you know it happens but I definitely feel like Big Legs has a big personality um and 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 it shows it shows and if you aren't confident in yourself then it will offend you you will be offended by her presence her presence doesn't offend me in fact I want her to be popping like go you know what I'm saying go ahead girl do your thing for real so after all of that, you and Barbie started talking about their, hers and Lucky's beef. Um, did you yes. kind of put in your head at that time to dislike Lucky? Because I knew, I know you knew her from season one because you saw it. I didn't know if you knew her prior, but at that point were you just like, oh, I'm not fucking with her because I'm rocking with Barbie? So I didn't, I don't, well, I didn't know Lucky personally or anything like that. 
prior to us meeting on this show this season. Um, but I did like her season one only because um, I felt like she was just the realest. You know what I mean? But then Barbie definitely was telling me her side of the story. You know, there's always his side, her side and the truth and all of that. So with Barbie being my roommate, it, it was kind of like, well, I'm sleeping with this bitch every night. I'm kind of going to have to hear what she has to say. I'm definitely going to have to have her, have her back because we're roommates. It's not, it, yes, it's a competition, definitely. Because I, I also am playing a game. I know what I was doing rooming with Barbie. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, hello. I didn't have to room with Barbie. Right. I did that to be nice to a girl and to play the game how I know the game needed to be played. So I knew what I was doing. Um, it kind of worked, kind of didn't. But I never really just like put it in my head that I didn't like Lucky. I was just like, damn. I need to get to the bottom of this because what the fuck is really going on? Like, who am I in the house with? Are these girls, um, like, are they pimping each other out or are they, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying, I'm trying to figure this out because I don't want to get tossed in, inside the cycle. I don't want to be, yeah. um, you know, I already came down here basically to, to be pimped and, and hold and, and <laughs> all that and stuff by the, by the damn network. That's, yeah. that's the real pimp. You know what I'm saying? We down here making money for the network. I don't want to be making money for anybody else's daddy and all that. Other, it was just craziness back. I don't know what they was talking about. Speaking of the network, let's just take a pause and talk about that real quick. Um, because Zeus is blowing up, and I want to know what it was like working with Zeus. Did the producers ever chime in and try to put bugs in your ears like normal producers on TV do, or did they just? <laughs> whatever you need to do because i know there's a storyline and they need to make sure that that storyline works and that things are just conformed properly but were they behind a lot of the drama or was that all natural i feel like i feel like it was very 50 50 because they knew what the hell they was doing waking up putting microphones on our chests early in the morning mm -hmm. they knew what the fuck was going on getting us drunk and leaving the microphones on and then we forget we got microphones on and then the same bitch we talk about they're gonna send that bitch in the room they know what they do <laughs> did they ever like well during your interviews did they ever show you clips of other girls interviews and be like you know blank said this about you watch you know, they didn't do that to me. They didn't do that to me, but I have a feeling it was done to someone else. So we're definitely going to find that out at the reunion for sure. Because, I mean, if I'm right, then shit's going to pop off. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. So I'm hoping I'm right more. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, I, I am too, because we want that. We want to see all that drama. We, we're hoping that the reunion is popping. We'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. But so you guys find your rooms, you have that conversation um, with Barbie, and then you guys have like a little mingle and Barbie starts talking a lot about Lucky. And it seems like from our aspect that Lucky is just right across the room and she can hear it. So she comes over and they start confronting each other. And I want to know um, your thought, because from my aspect, I think that Barbie is white. I don't know what she might be mixed or something. How did you feel about her saying the N-word? Um, ugh, that's such a sensitive topic. I mean, I just she definitely shouldn't have said it. I mean, she knows, you know what I'm saying? But I also know that people are really blowing that part out of proportion. She wasn't saying it in no type of negative way. I don't believe that. Or, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like that's just how she talks. And I, apparently the people she be around allow her to talk like that. I don't have a problem. I feel like people are too caught up in that. It's a freedom of speech. You can say what you want to say. She can say what she want to say. Anybody can say what they want to say. Now, if you get stocked in your mouth after saying what you want to say, that's different. You. But you can say what you want to say. Yeah. And the thing is, is that a lot of people, I don't think they realize, I mean, they should because it's very obvious, is that Lucky was gonna hit her prior to her saying the n-word and she didn't even oh yeah that is, she oh was yeah I, I, I knew she was gonna hit her when she sat down in front of her i was like now that looks a little suspicious yeah that preview that they posted made it seem like she was saying may i because she said that but she said may i prior to that because she just kept talking shit so it was gonna happen it was gonna happen i didn't think it was gonna happen the way that it did because i mean literally she just like catapulted off of the fucking table and i'm like holy shit 
So, you know, naturally I'm going back to, I'm like, well, hold on, who are you trying to hit? What's going on? Cause I don't even know y'all hoes. Did you now, think you that know, you were attacked for some reason? Huh? Your face, you were like everywhere. You would look like a spotter. <laughs> yes, I was like, hold the fuck on. Because I just want to make sure, you have to understand when stuff like that breaks out, not only are the girls catapulting from their positions, but then here come a swarm of big ass black security men. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? I need to protect myself. I'm small. <laughs> How tall are you? I'm five, three and a half. Okay. See, I swear the cameras make everybody look taller than they really are. Yes. And I, I have really long legs. I look tall, but my torso is like this big. Okay. So that, I mean, that was left off at a cliffhanger. So we already got one big ass fight and we see this preview of God knows how many fights. I think it looks like three or four. And I, I think, think it's like four. The, okay, so I saw a post like on a blog page saying that one of the girls from the show, I don't think it was you, said that there were like 10 fights in the first day. And I was like, oh, that's not true. They're probably talking about arguments, including that one fight. But it seems like that's counting up there. Like they might have been exaggerating a little bit, but it's like half that. Yeah, no, they, they were exaggerating just a smidge. I'm just going to say they were putting a little sugar on it because it really was like that. I mean, from the time we walked in, really, it was bigger, bigger, bigger. Well, bitch, get out of my face. Bitch, this double homicide smile. You know what I'm saying? It was just coming. Boom, 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 boom. That's all in one day. So was there ever a point where you were like, yo, it's day one and this is already what's happening? I don't know if I can do this. Yeah, on day two when I woke up. <laughs> Not day two. <laughs> but like... I don't think this is spoiling anything, but like, how was it in the morning? Was it chill or was it still just as hostile? Well, they kicked me and Barbie out the house. So we didn't even, we didn't even get to sleep in the house. You went to a hotel? Yeah. Yes, they kicked me and Barbie out because I, well, at the time, I didn't know she was the one that threw glass. She threw glass and that was the house rule. You weren't supposed to throw anything glass. Barbie did? Yes, Barbie did. And I didn't know that. And I'm hollering, you know, my drunk ass. I'm like, whoever threw the glass at me need to go home. Whoever <laughs> threw the fucking glass at me. The you, and then it was Barbie. I'm like, you bitch, I'm talking about you. <laughs> and yeah, so they kicked us out. And when we woke up and I was in the hotel, I was just like, all right, well, do we go back or do we go to the airport? You're in the hotel and you didn't even fight. <laughs> Right, right, right. It wasn't even my fucking fault, but it was my roommate. So, you know, we, they, they, they was like, no, both you bitches, because they didn't know our, the demeanor, I mean, the demeanor of our relationship. They didn't know if we were cool already or if we were planning this or if we were going to jump people or stuff like that. Did they, they didn't know. Did they get out lucky too? Cause she, she swung. She was the first one. To I don't think they kicked out lucky. I, I know. I know that Big Lex went to the hotel too because I accidentally knocked on her door <laughs> trying Actually, to find Barbie. Were, were you like trying to fuck her up? Like, cause you thought- No, I wasn't trying to fuck her up. I was really trying to find Barbie. And she was like, what's up? And I was like, oh, that's not Barbie. I was like, hello? She was like, this Big Lex. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any- Tea that you've spilled a little bit is there any more tea that you can spill on episode two before we see it like are we gonna see i mean we see some fights but it's quick are we gonna see barbie get her revenge her sweet revenge i mean it's definitely 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 gonna be some more um fighting going on between some of the girls i can't say who big but... <laughs> I'm not saying who. You Girl, said I'm it, not me. Frame by frame. Um, <laughs> you're bad. You're bad. I like it. I like it. Uh, I think that was a confirmation right there. And it looks like they go a couple rounds, too. Well, I mean, they they had some definite tension. It's only going to be right to let it out, right? Okay. Can you give us some tea on who you had the most beef with in the house throughout the entire season? Mm. Um, I never really had beef, like, with anyone. The only time there was actual, like, arguments was uh, in the beginning with me and Big Licks. 
not agreeing on the comment that she made. Um, I can tell you, I got into it with one of my closer friends. Everyone knows that I'm cool with Barbie and Boss Tech, so I definitely got into it with one of them. I'll let you know that. Um, Physically? Uh, no, 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 not recently. Okay. On the show. Okay. Yeah, on the show, definitely. The cameras, they were just about to wrap up, and they were like, hold on, is this bickering between Chanel? <laughs> oh, my God. They brought them Chanel's, out real quick. Chanel. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and they know I don't really do anything. So they were like, what? What is she saying? Who is she doing that? <laughs> so that being said, you said you didn't really have too much beef in the house. Is there anyone specific that you want to confront at the reunion? Oh, yes. I mean, I don't think that that's a secret at all. Everyone knows that I'm coming for that flying cockroach, yummy pee. Um, and that's just that on that. Not a flying cockroach. Yep. Flying cockroach. That's her. That's that bitch. She's a crispy one too. But you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna save all my energy for the reunion. She already knows what the deal is. Like everyone knows it's no secret. You know what I'm saying? They probably don't understand it, but I will definitely explain it while I'm handling it. Period. You pulling up with a uh, boots? Mm-hmm. Boots, ray, all that. Not <laughs> she said raid. I try, it took me three seconds to understand what <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> she said raid for the roaches. All that. Yes, honey. Because you do not fuck with the money, honey, baby. So um, I got to ask something. This might be some tea spilling. Um, there's a little bit of speculation going on from the fans that uh, you and Yummy got into it. And it looks like from the trailer that you may have possibly yanked your hair? Could you confirm that or deny that? Did I yank her hair? I most likely did. I tried to yank her soul out of her body. Yes, I'm, yes. I tried to drag her from wall to wall. Yes, absolutely. Matter of fact, you can see my watch in the clip, slow it down just a little bit. That's exactly why I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your watch talking to me and I was like, that's the same watch. The same watch. Yes, yes, yes. As I always tell you, you know it's me because I have the same jewelry on all the time. You'll know it's me. Yeah. Did you accomplish your goal? Oh, yes, I accomplished the goal. But see, she got me too good. So mm -hmm. it's not over. Oh, you coming back for revenge. Oh, I have to. I have to. I'm from Compton. I can't let her play me like that on national television, baby. I, I'll never be accepted into the hood again. <laughs> Wait, did y'all go out more than once in the house? No, we didn't go at it more than once. It was just kind of like, I, I started noticing things. And I was, you know, it just made me question. Cause I'm like, you know, everyone is so just like, oh, she's so small, she's so this, she's so that. I'm like, mm-mm, you gotta watch them. You gotta watch them. And then I was right. I was right. Y'all gonna know what I'm talking about. You always gotta right. follow your gut. Always. And cause I'm, I be right. I be right. Like y'all gonna see what I'm talking about. Y'all gonna see what I'm talking about. All right, so we're going to play kind of a little game, not really, but so I'm going to say each person's name individually on the show, and I want you to tell me one positive thing about them and one negative thing, okay? Okay. So, Lucky. Lucky. Um, she is a very positive person, very uplifting. Uh, the one negative thing about her... Uh, I don't really know. I guess like she just likes to be by herself a lot. Like, she, you know, she has her own thing going on. That's, I don't think that's negative. I don't know. She's not really a negative person. That's cool. I like that. All right. So y'all are, y'all are really good. Mm -hmm. All right. So Sapphire. Sapphire. Um, a good thing about her is that she's very motherly to all of us. The bad thing about her she do not know how to call it quits. When we, when it's time for us to go to sleep, she's like, no, we're practicing until we can't practice anymore, bitches. And I'm like, but I'm tired. But was that a good thing at the end of the day? Kinda, kinda, but you know what I'm saying? Nothing is more important than having a good night's sleep before a performance. So in a way it kind of didn't help us because we were tired. And you know what I'm saying? So that would be the only thing. She just needs to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Miss Natural. 
Um, it's natural. There's no denying that that girl is talented. I mean, she can dance her ass off. She's very it's seductive. It's all love like it. it. Yes, I, I love it. Okay. And um, the only negative thing I can say about her is I really don't know what would piss her off. Like, I don't know, you know. It could just be anything at any time. Like, I would have to find out because I don't want to piss her off because she's a little scary me. <laughs> like, she said her hands were registered or something like that. I don't know what that means quite exactly, but it's nothing that I personally want to fuck with. So, yeah. okay. okay. So, uh, Big Lex. Um, Big Lex. Good thing about her is... I mean, she's fun. Like, I've been watching her, and she travels a lot. She's really about her money. I, I'm all for a bitch that's making money. I'm the money honey. You know what I'm saying? If you make money, I fuck with you, and I'm going to continue to root you on. Um, the bad thing about Big Lace is she just don't give a fuck. <laughs> she just does not give a fuck. And uh, that could be a bad thing sometimes. So, you know, hopefully she'll... Uh, tap into that and learn from it and try to be a little bit more laid back. That mouth is lethal. Lethal. Shit. Lethal weapon. None of that was about me. Okay. I was like, hold on. That's why when she came for me, I was like, wait a minute, because I ain't trying to take care of you. Right. She said double homicide. I was like, yo, why do you got to come at me like that? Like my mouth. I was like, oop. <laughs> and I oop. <laughs> and I oop. Okay. <laughs> Damn. Blow me away. Blow me away. I want to see, even though she rubbed me the wrong way just from the first episode, I'm not going to judge her because it is the first episode. I yeah. can't wait to hear the insults that she has moving forward. Oh, man. I'm ready for her green screens as well. Like, I, I just know she's going to cut up. I already know. I honestly, I don't know what she has to say about me quite yet, but um, I'm looking forward to that as well. And, um, yeah, I mean, I don't take any of this personal. I think work is work, and I think they're doing a really good job, especially Big Lex. She's very funny. Like, she put a lot of laughs in the show this season. Is there any quote of hers other than Double Homicide that stuck in your head throughout the show or since the show? Yeah, but I can't tell y'all yet because it's not <laughs> – it's later. <laughs> okay, so it corresponds with some shit that happened that would be – okay. Yeah. All right, Um. so Barbie – um barbie i mean the good thing about barbie is she knows how to make money i mean you could put her anywhere i went through both of her little phones and i'm just like girl it's crazy i've seen it you know what i'm saying i've seen it in action so that that's always a good thing to me because i don't want to be around somebody who i feel like can't make no money that's awful um the bad thing about barbie i would say is she doesn't know how to listen to, well, maybe it's just me. I don't know. But I feel like she likes listening to men more than she likes listening to females. And so when she would ask me questions, you know, on the show, and I would give her direct answers, I'm not going to lie to you. And then she would turn around and ask, like, a guy, even, you know, not even just her boyfriend, just like, you know, a production team member or a security guard, just any man. She would ask the same exact question as if she didn't believe me. So that kind of pissed me off. I didn't like that shit. Like, well, but you could have asked him first. You know what I'm saying? But that's the only really bad thing. And maybe I'm a feminist or stuff. I don't like that. But hey. Okay. I got you. I got you. So next is Boss Tech. Boss Tech. Um, the good thing about Boss Tech is, well, for me, the good thing was her sense of style. Like, she she helped me. She styled me a lot um, while I was on the show. So, um, with, like, my cabaret look. Not my clothes clothes, but, like, my cabaret look. So, that was really good. Um, she's, a, she's a good person to talk to. She understands, you know, because she's older than me. So, she kind of did walk me through it a little bit. Because all the girls, they didn't give a damn. They don't care if I know about a hairdresser or if I know about a stylist. They worry about or, themselves, that's it. They only worry, yes, they only worried about themselves and each other. They do not fuck with me, none. But Boss Tech was like, this is my stylist. This is my person. If you want to use her, you know, link me up. So I really did appreciate that because she actually cared and knew that this was my first time being on TV. I don't know this industry and I don't know how it works. So I appreciate that. Um, the bad thing about Boss Tech was um, 
I'm not even just going to put her drinking out there, my drinking too. When both of us start drinking, me and Boss, they can bump heads. So. Do we see that on the yeah. show? You, you, yeah, you're going to see it on the show. All right. So. Okay, next is Aqua. Aqua. Aqua is a great dancer. Actually, she surprised me. Yes, she's a really, really good dancer. But the only bad thing I can say about her is that she wears her heart on her sleeve and like she really just, you can't do that in this if industry. I turn ass. Yes, and hard. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that in this industry. You know how old she is? Oh, no. She might be really young and it just like, I mean, you know. She that? is. She is. She is young. She's, I, I want to say she's either my age or a year younger than me or something like that. So 24, 25, you know. Because that sucks because like it's a great, it's a great thing to be like a good person and just be open with everything and, and feel as if nobody's going to judge you. But because certain people are built to just naturally have walls up and it sucks and it's unfortunate because as she gets older, she's going to probably experience what happened on the show more often. And that wall is going to go up to a point where the next cool person that she meets, she's not going to let them in. So that's yeah. Sucks. And it's awful. Yeah. Yeah. Or right, uh, next is Lexi. Um, let's see. The good thing about her is, I mean, we didn't really, mm. I mean, she's, she tried to stay neutral the whole time. And well, I really don't think that she was neutral the whole time, but that's what she said. She tried to try to like be neutral. You think she was playing both sides or something? Kind of in a way. I mean, it's just, you know, because when you have certain things going on and you know that you're around people that are talking about people that you actually go hang out with, like, I just don't see how that's, you know what I'm saying? And then the like general statements like, oh, I said hi to everybody or this is for, you know what I'm saying? It was just like never really clear. So I guess that's a good thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't really know. But then for me, that's not a good thing because I don't really know. Like, you know what I'm saying? I Like, I don't know how she feels about me. I don't know if she could, would consider us cool or anything like that. Like, um, But you would never fully 100% like trust her with something deep that's going on between uh, like within you? Oh, God, no. I have no idea what she would intend to do with that information. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what's the, is that, is that part of the bad thing? The negative? Yeah, it's, it's really a both because you just don't know. Like, I really just don't know. So we're going to put question mark there. Okay. All right. Well, the last and final person um, is your best friend, the love of your life, Yummy. (laughs) <laughs> you're being funny <laughs> now um you know Co- try to condense the positives come on you gotta give me one <laughs> she has she brought bubbles like real bubbles uh-huh <laughs> that's your positive <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Give her one more. Did you enjoy them bubbles? You know, I did because she gave me a, a, a little tube of bubbles. She did. I threw it away now, but. You said, fuck these bubbles. Hell yeah. Fake ass bubbles. Fake ass bitch. I ain't gonna play with her. Yo. Yo, give me a happy gesture and then, and, then, and then turn around and be fake. No. No. See, she was another one that I didn't know. And then I found out. So, cause, cause she played the whole time. Like she really did, which was cool because it wasn't bothering me. It, was, it wasn't bothering me at all. You know what I'm saying? And she's a really good dancer. I'll give her that. She's a good pole dancer. There we go. That was hard for me. I need a drink for that. Now, um, <laughs> <laughs> you need to take a shot of tequila just because you said one positive. Yeah, cause that was. <laughs> all right. What's your negative? Oh, well, shit. Let's see. The negative is she fucked up and um, she is a little manipulative, scheming, 
confusing uh, enchantress. That's what she's a fairy tale creature. That's what she calls herself. She's an enchantress. She says she's magic. So is she like a, a flying cockroach? Because you said she was a roach and she's a fairy tale now. So, or she's a fairy. So now she's like a flying. You know what? She's more like the flying monkeys off of that one. Yeah, Wizard of Oz. I think because they're, they're magical, right? Yeah. I think that, yeah, that's I think, what, I think that's what she was going for. But she's definitely a flying something because she definitely flew at me and I had to swat the little thing. So, you know. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. What yeah. can, give us something. What can we expect for the rest of the season? Like, is this drama that we're seeing, episode one and two, is that going to be the end of it? Or is it just, don't lie to us, is it going to be throughout the entire show, every episode you think we're going to get a lot of... Sh- um, okay, the one thing I can say for sure is that, yes, they did not say that it was two times the drama for no reason. It is definitely two times the drama, so there's way more drama to be expected. However, the job that we came to do here on Jocelyn's Cabaret it gets done. So that's what y'all need to be looking forward to seeing how we go from all of this drama and really pulling it together to bring the movie that we are playing for y'all. Okay, well, I don't even think that two times the drama, that's not the right thing to say. Yeah, that was a complete understatement for real. (laughs) Like, we're the younger bad girls club. Like, they need to just go ahead and pass the crown to us because we have taken off. (laughs) Uh, any thoughts of possibly being on that Bad Girls spinoff? If there's another season, any interest? Um, I mean, me, no, I'm not a bad girl. I'm definitely a cabaret girl. You know what I'm saying? I'm cabaret in real life. I dance at the Ritz Houston. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I'm really cabaret. So I'm always going to be a pretty cabaret girl. But I know a few girls that probably could be on uh, Bad Girls and Baddies and all that stuff. And, and they would do really, really good. And I'll be definitely here for all the tea. Mm-hmm. So how about season three of uh, Jocelyn's Cabaret? I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. I would love to be on fucking we season three. Too. That'd be great to see you on there. I would, I would love to be on season three. I'm definitely hoping we have to. Keep watching and stay tuned and everybody keep voting for the money, honey. You know what I'm saying? Letting the Zeus Network know that it's Liddy over here. All right, Chanel. Well, thank you so much for being on this interview with us today. It was a pleasure. I feel like you spilled a lot, a lot more tea than I ever even expected from you. But this was amazing. And I know we've only seen one episode, but I cannot wait to see the rest and see all the drama that happens but i also just want to see how you perform and how you grow on the show so i mean i'm excited to see more about you well thank you so much this is my first um zoom interview so you guys are the first you're my first too so i'm hoping we get to speak to you again maybe do a catch up after the reunion so we can get some more tea from you because I'm sure not everything will be aired and there'll be more tea to spill. Exactly. You already know. And I'm going to be the girl with all the tea for you. Yes, I love it. I love it. Because some people are too quiet, but you you brought it all. You answered everything that I wanted to know. And I'm sure you answered everything that all the fans want to know. And I'm Absolutely. hoping that you blow up on social media because you deserve it. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, you guys. You guys are awesome. I've been fucking with y'all since day one. Y'all been fucking with me since day one. Like, we're in this. Yes, and guys, be sure to follow Chanel. Chanel, let them know your Instagram. Give them all your social media so they can follow you. Okay, so my Instagram is at chanel.tso.official and my Snapchat is... um at TSO Chanel. So go ahead and follow me on both of those to get inside scoops and also links to um, my OnlyFans to see Chanel (laughs) X-rated. And be sure to follow every single one of us. Follow me at uh, Don't Touch My Hair. Follow Formation Productions on Instagram because you got to be following all of us because that's when you'll get the notification that this interview is going to drop and you will see more interviews from the girls from Jocelyn's Cabaret 
coming soon, hopefully, but this one will be, I think, one of the best. Top notch, top notch. Yes, love the personality, love everything. Thank you again, and I hope you have a great night, okay? Thank you so much. All right, have a good night. We'll keep in touch. You too.